Hey, what's up? Jason here. Today I want to talk about the Unity 2020 release. It just came out a couple days ago and it's packed full of features. Now, I don't want to go through all of the features in there because there's a ton of stuff and depending on the kind of game that you're making, the things may or may not apply to you. Some of us use new render pipelines, some don't. Some use all kinds of cool 2D features, some don't. So today I'm going to instead hit the top five things that I think apply to everybody who's using Unity. So if you want to upgrade, you're just not sure what's new, what's changed in there, or what you need to know, follow along and I'll share with you what I think are the most important things. But before I go on to my top five, if you have something that you think is really cool in 2020, please drop it in a comment below and let me know. I haven't seen everything and there's probably a lot of other cool stuff that we should all know about. Also, please hit that like button and share this video. Just drop it on Facebook or MySpace in your time machine or wherever you can. It really helps and I appreciate it. All right, let's get on to feature number one. The first big change is the prefab edit mode. It's now in place. It used to open a temporary scene, but now I've got a crate prefab here. And if I hit the open button, you see that I can actually view it in context. I can see what it looks like in the world. So if I make a change to it, like I scale this up to 0.75 by 0.75, I can see it and I can see it actually live updating my objects there. Now, the reason it's live updating the existing objects is because I have that auto save checkbox on. If I had turned that off, then it wouldn't change them until I hit the save button. There's one other important thing to show here though, and I'm gonna go out of prefab edit mode and make a little change to one of these objects. So I'm gonna select this crate and maybe just change the color to red. So I've got this one bright red crate number one. Now I'm gonna make a change to it in edit mode. Notice how the red disappeared. That's because the overrides on that object aren't shown by default. If I check this show overrides checkbox, I can see that it's red and that that's the overridden value for the one that I'm editing. If I uncheck it and go back though and just select a different one and edit, I shouldn't see that even if I hit the show overrides because this one doesn't have that override. Now I think this is really cool and really useful because it lets me see my prefabs in well, in context, and see what they're gonna look like and what the changes are actually doing without having to bounce back and forth. Plus, I don't have to lose my whole scene view context in my head. So it's one of my favorite things in this new update. Speaking of keeping context, the second thing in 2020 that I think is really awesome is the focused inspector. If you right click now and hit properties on any component, you can see I'll do it on both of these, you'll get a little inspector that stays locked to that property of that game object. Even if I change context on my inspector, I can still see and modify the things for the one that I've already selected. So I've got my bird here, got a sprite renderer, I could go change him to look like a monster even though I don't have him selected. Now you might wonder, how useful is this? I think it's extremely useful because I hit play all the time and then I select different objects and I wanna see things like, where is my bird? What's his position? Look at that. Now I can watch it, drag it around and keep an eye on it and keep things focused without having to open up a whole bunch of inspectors, dock them, lock them and unlock them. This is gonna save me a lot of time and hopefully it'll save you some time too. The next thing that I think I'll be using all the time is the new cut and paste functionality and the copy and paste from components. I wanna show both of these really quick, but they're pretty simple. The cut and paste just allows us to finally select things in the hierarchy, hit control X, and then maybe move them into a different scene or even to the bottom and hit control V to paste them. I can also hit control X to cut them and then paste them down as children of something with control shift and V. I think this is pretty useful. There have been times when I wanted to move multiple objects and I had to keep dragging them around and this will save me a little bit of time. The other thing that I think is even more useful though is the ability to copy and paste component values. So now say I've got my monster here and I changed the sprite of him to this new purple monster monster, and I want to apply that to all of them. I could go in and select them all, but I can also just now copy, select all of these, select the sprite, and paste. But the part of this that I think is even cooler is that it works on things like this size for my box collider. So say I expand out my box collider to make it actually fit with this character, I can now copy that vector two, and I can select it on my other guys and paste in the vector two. Now this works with vectors, curves, gradients, object references, and I think a couple other things. Now I think one of the biggest changes is to the asset store and package manager. The asset store is no longer available inside Unity. Instead, 
We buy assets through the web interface and grab them through the package manager. So the stuff that you've already purchased has been moved into package manager and the whole interface for buying is completely on the web now. I think that this is kind of an interesting change and it makes sense because there were always issues with the internal asset store browser and that whole system for buying things. And a lot of the time I would recommend people searched on the web and then click through. So it's interesting to see that they've made this move, but it's also important to understand how it works. With the new workflow, you'll go in through the web, select the assets that you want to get, add them to your assets or buy them, and then you can hit open in Unity and it'll pop open the package manager and find the asset that you've already purchased or grabbed. There we go. You can see it grabbed a bolt for me and I now have the option to download it and import it. I can also see all of my existing assets just by going to packages and my assets here. And up in the top right, I can search for the assets that I already own. So let's find some particles. Go pick one of the packs that I already have, hit download, and we can pull it right in. And notice that it's still in our project. It's not moving to the packages subfolder, even though it's in the package manager. So your packages aren't gonna completely change, but where you get them from or where you're getting your asset packs from is gonna change a little bit. The last thing I wanted to share is something that you might not be using, but I think that it is worth reevaluating if you're not, and that's Unity Collaborate. They actually made some pretty big changes to it and added some functionality that I think makes it at least worth another look. So to enable Unity Collaborate, you just go to the services window, click on collaborate and turn it on. You have to be logged in. Once you do that, you can go to window and then collaborate and you'll see that the interface has changed quite a bit. You can now see all of the history and expand out the changes and click on the files in there. I wish you could see the actual changes in the files from this view, but it's a step in the right direction. The bigger difference and the thing that I really like, and let's pull collaborate over so it's nice and big, is that in the changes window, I can now select the files that I wanna commit add in a message for them and publish just those files. I no longer have to publish everything or make it hard to publish the only the files that I want. Now I can go in and just make those small changes. The other thing that I thought was really cool in here is the option to invite a teammate is now very visible. Well, it's pretty visible. It's on this little drop down. Hopefully it just becomes a full button that's always up there because it's the one thing that I always find people struggling to figure out how to do. So if you haven't used Unity Collaborate before and you've been kind of considering it, maybe you're trying something else or you're not using any source control at all, give it a shot. Definitely, if you're not using any source control, jump in and give Collaborate a try. Now, of course, there are tons of other things in 2020 that I'm really excited about. Lots of programming related things like generic script references and an external profiler, the burst compiler. There's a lot of stuff in there. But these were the things that I think hopefully apply to just about everyone, except for maybe the Collaborate. Again, I think you should probably try out some source control if you're not using any. Now, if this was helpful and you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Drop a comment and a like and a subscribe and a share and all that stuff. Also, special thanks to everybody on Patreon. Really appreciate it. And um, thanks again, everybody. Goodbye.